First, you used our guide to buy the best cheapo keyboard out there. Then, you complemented it with the best sub $15 mouse. Then, you actually ended up replacing the original cheapo keyboard with a slightly less cheap, but still an expensive mechanical one. And now, it's time to complete your I spent all of my money on DLC equipment set with one final piece, a gaming headset for less than $25, because you guys love a deal. This Cyber Monday, Mass Drop will be launching 40 of their best deals, along with flash sales, which will be live on their site for just 12 hours or until the item sells out. So check it out at the link below. First up, well, I'm not gonna mince words. This is our cheapest pair. The IP, AP, Appy, whatever. The Vibration Gaming Headphone. And it costs just $10. Now, I actually don't mind this personally, but we're getting off to a bad start here. Vibration is just part of the product name, not a feature, which apparently disappointed at least one unlucky buyer. With that said, AP must have put the money that they saved on packaging to good use, because their headset actually sounds okay if a touch bassy, and while exquisite is definitely a stretch, for $10, the build quality on these things is surprisingly okay. Their lightweight, deep and cushy ear pads and self-adjusting suspension style headband make for a comfy listening experience, though they do get pretty warm, while the long and it's weird, it's kind of greasy feeling, cable and included splitter make them convenient to use with your desktop, phone, or console. There's an integrated volume wheel and mic, which despite not having a boom or a mute button for that matter, sounds on par with most of the others in our roundup. Test, test, test. This is the Appy Vibration Gaming Headphones microphone sound at just 10 bucks. And if you plug in the extra USB, you get multicolored breathing LEDs. You can't control them, but hey, it's a bonus at this point. I like this one. Now let's meet our next contestant. Just because your headset is cheap, doesn't mean it has to look cheap. But the GD40s from Headphone Ninja definitely do both of those things. They're made of ugly cheap plastic and crude pleather, and they don't fit well. Even on their smallest setting, they don't seal on my ears properly, though if you've got a real melon head, then sure, plop them on, at least until the poorly padded headband digs into your skull. On the plus side, they've got a semi-bendy-ish, what they're calling blade-style microphone, that's a boom microphone if you're not a ninja in your spare time, and a braided cable with an inline controller that just looks almost as stupid as it feels in your hand. They actually sound okay, but with all these other problems, who honestly cares? Next up, the Sadie's SA708 for $15.99. Wait a second, are these things actually getting worse as the price goes up? These things look more like pretend headphones for kids to play gaming team house rather than an actual product. I mean, just listen to that build quality. And Fit gets a big fat fail too. If you have large ears, these are on-ear headphones with hard, uncomfortable padding. And if you have small ears, then they're sort of on-ear headphones with hard, uncomfortable padding. Sound quality, at least, has been pretty consistent across the headsets we've looked at so far. But with that said, the bass on these manages to stand out as extra muddy. And it's one of the only ones that doesn't come with an adapter for console play. And, and while we're at it, wait a minute. This thing's got the same crappy inline controller as the last headset. I guess at least it has EMI shielding to ensure a good mood. And to their credit, the mic does conceal pretty nicely along with the rest of this thing in the garbage, if your garbage can has a lid. The Somic G923 comes in white or black and advertises in not one, but two places on the box, a long, hard microphone with high sensitivity. Ironically, it's actually one of the few mics that stood out as especially quiet and distant sounding. This is a test of the Somic G923 stereo gaming headset at $17.99. 
To their credit, they are not uncomfortable though. The cups offer some articulation and the inline controls are small and equipped with an appreciated clip, but the build quality on this one is really bad. Like, think how bad it has to be to stand out in this roundup. And look how far the mic sits from your mouth. And listen to the headband adjustment mechanism. They also included this inexplicable plastic bag. Is this supposed to be a carrying case? Next up then is the Beekcellent GM1 at 1999. Tons of padding actually makes this one reasonably comfortable despite the rigid design. And while it sounds grating and low quality, the headband offers a lot of steps to help you find the right fit. Like the $10 headset, this one also has LEDs, but it's just static blue all day. And it also has inline controls, but it's one of those ones that hangs at an awkward length and the sound of it dragging across my clothes is definitely not invited to my next birthday party. I'm afraid not even Bill and Ted would approve of this one. Next, the $20 Nubowentus are kind of like a souped up version of the $10 APs, at least at first glance. I can say positively that they are the first thing we've seen that comes close to premium feeling today with a soft touch finish, braided cable, and flexible boom mic, but that beauty is only skin deep. Or in this case, a flimsy piece of pleather deep. The ribbon of metal in the headband digs into your head in a matter of minutes. Oh, oh this thing fucking sucks. And the caliper pressure on these is unfortunately so low that small and medium noggin folks alike won't ever feel like they're really staying on. Making matters worse, for some inexplicable reason, they put the mute switch right on the mic, meaning that you have to make a bunch of scuffling noises while you take off the included windsock every time you want to use it. <laughs> Next, we have the Version Tech G2000s, which turned out to be the Koshin Each, whatever that means, G2000s when they arrived. And on the subject of inconsistencies, while they do definitely feature analog connectivity as advertised on the box, they're actually blue, not orange. They've got a super flexible headband though for when your mind gets blown watching Tech Wiki, and after a break-in period for that stiff headband foam, they uh, would be pretty comfortable awful. if the ear cups weren't so shallow that my ears were pressed against the, for some reason, convex covers on the drivers. This is honestly enough of a deal breaker for me that even lighting effects can't make up for it. But if you don't care about that, then sound quality is similar to the rest, and the boom mic is in exactly the right position to sit at the corner of your mouth if you're a catfish. On to the, uh, wait a minute. What's this? A recognizable brand? The NSI DS501s have better build quality than their Red Ranger glossy plastic suggests and are actually among the most light and most comfortable headsets in the roundup today. And they sound all right too, with ample bass without being too over the top, though like the rest, they do become pretty distorted and muddy at high volumes. The mic boom pivots and bends, which is really nice, but with that said, even correctly positioned, the recording quality isn't the greatest. This is a test of the MSI DS501s for $24.99. Bringing us finally to the stylish Patriot Viper V330s. These guys have got a soft touch finish, breathable fabric ear pads, a nice ratcheting headband with a braided cable, a nearly invisible foldaway mic, and integrated controls on the left ear cup. They're one of the only two sets in the roundup to come with a travel bag. And even though it's pretty drek, it's significantly better than the other one. But with all that positive stuff said, they're also the only set to stand out as overly tinny sounding. They're not super comfortable and they're the most expensive one that we looked at today. So which set do we recommend then as your new daily drivers? Well, since they mostly all have comparable sound and mic quality, it pretty much came down to comfort, build quality, and price, which makes it really hard to beat the $10 APs, whose multicolored LEDs and construction put them way ahead in terms of value, especially when you factor in that they cost less than half as much as some of the other ones we featured. 
MSI's DS501 does cost more, but was significantly more comfortable to my noggin. And then, if you don't dig the suspension style headband, I'd say go for the Be Excellent GM1s. This episode was brought to you by TunnelBear, the easy to use VPN app. When people are shopping for a VPN, one of the features they look for is a kill switch. Now, before you actually get properly connected to the internet and you can start browsing, your device will actually start to send information about itself and what it wants to do to, you know, that hotspot in the airport. And before you connect to your VPN, all of this traffic is actually unencrypted. So in the few seconds it takes to connect, you've probably already broadcast your IP, maybe a few DNS requests or a search query. Vigilant Bear from Tunnel Bear stops this by blocking all outbound and inbound traffic so nothing leaks out before you connect, helping keep you private throughout your entire session. And this is cool. If your connection goes down for some reason, Vigilant Bear will kick back in and stop all outbound and inbound traffic until the connection comes back. So for a free trial of TunnelBear, go to tunnelbear.com slash LTT. We've got that linked below. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked in the video description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.